today I'm going to show you our garden in June. Hello Shamai and I'm Anharad from Gwyn in Griffith and welcome back to our channel. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living and we do reviews as well. But today I'm going to give you a mid-June, it's the 13th of June 2020, a, a little sort of garden tour and an overview of what's been going on in the garden, what's been working and what hasn't been working. The last couple of months have been um, quite challenging in terms of the weather. We've had a prolonged and seasonably hot and dry spring, followed by uh, a late May frost, which caught us out caught us out a bit. And some plants have had some uh, frost damage, which I'll go on to later on. And then we've had a lot of rain over the last two weeks, um, accompanied by a lot of strong wind and gusts, which has battered some of our sort of tender plants. But um, but come with me and we'll have a little tour around the garden and I'll show you what we've been doing, what our plans are uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Now it's been a busy year for us uh, in the garden. In here what you'll see is a vegetable garden in the making. However, Easter last year, Easter 2019, this was still the field uh, behind the house and none of this existed but uh, during the Easter weekend last year we had a digger in to clear the whole site out we laid foundations for a brand new greenhouse which was erected last uh, last June so it's been up for a year now and then over the last year we've been gradually building more raised beds we still haven't finished this is an ongoing project and you'll see that some areas of the garden look quite tidy and finished whereas the area where I'm stood now is not finished but it's a project and I thought it would be nice to share this with you. So where I'm standing now you can see that there's a slope um, going down into the garden and it, tomorrow in fact Griffith, I've, ma I've persuaded Griffith to do this job tomorrow where we're going to be putting steps in here to make it more tidy coming down into the garden and then do it um, building sort of a wall uh, using the sleepers that we've got to give a definite uh, edge to the to the bank there and to tidy things up and in the corner here we've kept this here this tree was here when we moved in it's a beautiful old apple tree I've got no idea what the variety is but it's absolutely bursting with apples um, every year this tree gives a, a fantastic crop it is however um, needing extra support Griff has had to build a support structure around the trunk there because it's quite rotten on the base but uh, every year it's coming back and um, providing us with a lot of apples and they are beautiful apples too so we're looking forward to harvesting them later on so as we walk down here now you will see that this area is sort of finished um, these new beds in the middle here are, um, are new beds which were um, put in um, during uh, the beginning of lockdown and I've already filled them up. The first bed is filled up with um, a couple of roses and some dahlias. Now I've decided to put some roses in here in the middle of the vegetable garden because I'm walking down past here every day and I just love the smell of roses and be, being able to appreciate their scent where I pass all the time. So that's the reason why I've planted them uh, in the bed here. I may um, move them at some point to another location but for now I'm happy having the roses here but this bed here is where the season started for us it's um, a bed full of new potatoes and um, they are actually ready to harvest there's flow flowers on these and they've started going over actually but I planted up a lot of um, potatoes in buckets and in tubs um, we've got a lot of tubs on the farm and which we feed to the ewes and cattle over the winter and we keep all of them uh, for the garden I drill some holes in the base and then they're perfect for uh, planting potatoes and other crops in so we've been cr we've been eating um, the the uh, potatoes from the buckets uh, up until now but um, most probably tomorrow for Sunday lunch I'll be starting to pitch in to the um, to the potatoes in in this bed over there then is a brand new bed which was built uh, last weekend in fact and most probably over the weekend now we'll be um, filling that in 
Um, I think I might be planting some leeks in there um, along with some um, kale possibly and as the potatoes um, are harvested from this bed I'll be planting up some swede um, in, in the bed uh, for, for winter. Now over here then uh, we've got some chard um, and um, and some kale it's not doing particularly well um, a combination of factors I think cat is one of the reasons why the kale isn't um, coming up as well as it should so we've got the cat coming into the garden which is why I've placed that net over it and um, yeah the, the the weather has been um, playing havoc with with the plants in here then we've got some um, uh, some carrots and some parsnips I'm not sure what's gone on this year again with with the germination of the carrot it's been really hit or miss I've got a, a the first row here I've only got two carrot plants that actually have germinated I've replanted um, twice and I think I can see the signs of young plants actually starting to come through so germination has been hasn't been excellent um, here this year I'm not sure why but um, this row is looking great and I need to actually thin these carrots now um, shortly by the side of you there is the um, bed of um, rhubarb um, this is a new bed this year again and um, last year we only had about four beds in the garden so most of the beds here actually are new this year so I planted this I planted this bed up um, February March and um, excuse all the slug holes in the leaves but the rhubarb is doing pretty well and um, I didn't harvest any of the um, of the uh, rhubarb last year uh, to give it energy to grow but I might harvest just a couple um, this year but I won't um, harvest it too hard this bed here then we've got some blueberry bushes um, I put a net over here um, because we've got a lot of blackbirds in the garden and um, yeah I want to eat the blueberries so I've, I've put that net over there to try and protect um, the blueberries uh, you'll see down the path here it's not finished um, I've got the membrane up to this line here the membrane then um, will continue up here and uh, we'll put some gravel on top then to make it easy and manageable um, we've got two young children and um, having a garden which was easy to maintain and look after was really important to me this area looks really messy at the moment however up in that corner there is where the compost bins will be um, uh, positioned um, it's a temporary location here at the moment um, but I'm going to relocate these up to the corner there I may actually put sort of a slab or something underneath them to, to keep it more tidy and then this will enable me then to have a, another sort of um, small bed here um, this actually is um, the shadiest part of the vegetable garden so I might plant up some um, lettuces and salads that are tolerant to shade so um, again you know this is a project it's an ongoing project it's not a, a, fight, a, a finished garden and then down here you'll see that we've got a, a, a big area here um, that's you know that needs developing at the moment the children's uh, mud kitchen is uh, taking place here but there's space here for uh, more beds um, which will happen over the course of next year so if you follow me down here now then in this bed if you were getting a new bed this year i planted up some um some cabbages and some um, broccoli in there and i've got the net over them to try and protect them so we'll see how that goes over here again we've got some salads and um, i've got a, a, a tomato there with them um, i've got most of my tomatoes are in the in the greenhouse but I didn't have the heart to throw the seedlings I had left over in the compost bin so what I've decided is I've planted a lot of tomatoes out and about mostly in um, buckets and containers that I have if they do uh, give us a crop then fantastic if not well I haven't lost anything and um, they haven't cost me anything we had these buckets anyway living on a farm I've got access to plenty of um, uh, soil and rotten down manure so you know it hasn't cost me anything and i'm watering the beds anyway so it's, it's not um 
causing me any more work so actually there are some flowers um, starting to set there and I can see on this plant here we've actually got some <clears throat> tomatoes starting to um, come through so we might have a, um, a little uh, crop of tomatoes from the tomatoes outdoors here then we've got a bed of strawberries now we've had a really good crop of strawberries this year if you come close here you'll be able to see some of the lovely uh, strawberries um, which are probably ready to pick some of them and the boys apps oh look at the size of this one the boys are absolutely loving oh and a little snail there as well slug there as well the boys are absolutely loving uh, coming down to the garden every morning to harvest uh, the strawberries which is definitely a highlight for them now in the corner here I've got runner beans now I've had a bit of a disaster with runner beans this year um, first lot I planted out uh, beginning of May were uh, doing absolutely great but then we had that frost in the middle of May and I lost the lot every single plant died so I sow more I sow more seeds then and um, I um, saved seeds from last year so I have plenty in stock luckily so um, this is the second attempt um, they're doing not too bad considering I only um, sowed the seeds in middle of May. Um, they, they sort of, they've caught up not too bad. They have been um, munched by um, uh, sn slugs and snails, but I have applied nematodes um, uh, throughout the garden uh, last week. So I think that's already starting to, um, to sort of have effect because I haven't seen any more noticeable damage over the last week. Um, I do have some problem with um, bindweed in the garden. I can see another bindweed um, sort of climbing up here. So this is one of the things I've got to keep on top of. Um, so that's a bindweed there. You don't want them in your garden. So yeah, keep on top of weeds. Over here then I've got um, a French, um, well, nasturtiums in the front here, uh, and then French climbing beans again same happened with these my first attempt got um uh, severe frost damage and um i lost the plants luckily i had spares in the in the greenhouse so i brought them outside but they haven't really picked up that well yet um they've um they're still a bit slow getting going but um hopefully they they will catch up the bed here then we've got some broad beans i've got two different varieties the first um, variety you can see the flowers are going over now but it's a crimson um, red i haven't grown this variety before the flowers smell absolutely gorgeous when they were in flower and um, i'm really looking forward to um to tasting them on the other broad bean variety then you can see the pods are forming if you come close you'll be able to see the pods um starting to form so in a few weeks time we'll be able to harvest um, our first batch of broad beans I've got a, um, a little sort of row here then of peas um, and you can see the pods are um, forming and um, no doubt that a lot of these will get eaten in the garden and won't even make it into the house so looking forward to, to eating them in the beds here then we've got the arch i've got a climbing variety of um squash so haven't grown a climbing variety before so it's a bit of an experiment and um, so we'll see how it goes i've got some crochets um sort of on the floor around it as well um as well as some sunflowers and um a few corn so this is a bit of an experiment we'll see how it goes and if you come round this side then you'll be able to see that we've got our first baby courgette um, which is probably actually ready for me to harvest and I'll I'll probably harvest that um, today now over the weekend so looking forward to doing that the bed then here be beside me here is um, my onion bed um, I was quite late actually um, uh, planting the sets uh, I, I bought a, a net of sets um, uh, end of winter early spring so i've planted them in here i've got a couple of garlic there i was way too late planting the garlic um whether they'll come i'm not sure but we'll see i've i've, ne I've never really grown garlic i always sort of set out every year that next year i'm going to plant more garlic but i never quite come around i i never quite come around to do, doing it so next year i'm definitely going to uh, plant up a lot of garlic so these are my onions they're coming there's a mix of red and white coming up not too bad 
in the end here then is my corn as you can see they're not looking amazing um again these were hit quite bad with the, fr the late frost and um, i actually lost a few plants um, i've direct sown into the ground um, they haven't come up yet so we'll see what happens whether there'll be um, any decent crop from them they, they have had quite a bit of damage from the frost and um, slugs as well so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that last year i had a really decent crop of corn in the cob but um, we'll have to wait and see this bed here then is my herb this has gone to seed so i need to cut that back actually um but yeah it's a small little herb um uh, raised bed um and um i'm on a mission to build another herb bed you can never have enough herbs in your garden dotted around here then i've got a few dahlias um spurs coming up um an old um cast iron um feeder got lovely lettuce leaves coming up here which is providing us with ample lettuce at the moment in the in the pot here then i've got a dwarf uh french bean so these don't need staking um and you can see that uh, we've got some lovely um beans starting to form there so we're going to do a clean uh, just before we go into the cleaners actually um some more tubs of potatoes and uh, this is a bit of an experiment actually uh, these potatoes were um, spreads that we had in the house which had um, started sprouting and rather than throwing them in the compost um, Griffith decided to have a go at planting them and seeing what happens and they're coming up great actually I think I can see the sign, early signs of blight actually starting to um, take uh, form on the leaves here so we have to keep an eye on that but um so far touch wood the potatoes in the main bed are free from blight it happens every year we always get blight there's nothing we can really do about it i'm not keen on using um sprays or chemicals in the garden so um but anyway we'll see how much crop we get from those tubs the tubs that i planted up and have already harvested were brilliant i've got plenty of mint over there um there's quite a few varieties of mint but um i think the garden mint is being the dominant um variety there and smothering everything else so into the greenhouse then i've planted up um a lot of marigolds um uh, sown from seed uh, early in the in the spring and these are starting to flower now um i'm planting these um to help uh, deter uh, aphids um with the tomatoes and these tomatoes were grown from seed and i've got the first fruit um starting to appear there i've also got some lettuces in between which are sown early in the year um, but moving forward now i won't be planting any more lettuces in the greenhouse because obviously it'll get too hot and they'll bolt but um these were planted in for an early crop of lettuce um along with um some um, rocket leaves there i've got some spring onions um there and some radishes left over as well um, these two varieties I did cheat, I did buy these as young plants um, and you can see that they are uh, much more advanced than the ones um, I showed you a few moments ago which I planted myself from, from seed. However, I can see down here that we've got some nice looking tomatoes coming there and again um, those were planted from seeds. Um, in the front here I've got some self-seeded tomatoes from last year and although I've, I've picked up um, probably 50 plus of um, uh, self-seeded tomato plants. I've left these because they were positioned in the front there so they were sort of ish in the right position and I've left them be and see what happens. I've got no idea what varieties they are at the moment so it'll be a bit of a, um, a bit of a surprise. Um, the end here then I've got um, my Country Taste F1 beef steak tomatoes again sown from seed and um got flowers i need to pinch that out actually i always pinch the side shoots out um starting to uh, come to flower now and i don't know if you'll be able to see but right in the corner there then i've got my two cucumber plants um i've got some you can see them some flowers on them and i think i've got some baby um cucumbers forming as well and um on the floor here then i've got two aubergine plants now after um, reading up a lot about aubergine plants, uh, 
I think I've come to the conclusion that I sow my seeds way too late in the season and it's probably unlikely that I'll get any um, aubergines this year. It needs a really long growing season and I um, think I've left it too late this year. But never mind, uh, there's always next year and gardening, you know, it's a bit of an experiment and what's the worst that can happen? So um, we'll see what happens now by the end of the summer, but I am doubtful that I'll get any um, aubergines, but we'll see. In here then we've got a mix of chilies and um, and sweet peppers. Uh, this particular variety over here is the um, sweet pepper orange variety which I planted uh, from seed and I don't know why but that variety is absolutely miles ahead of the rest of them even though they were planted at around the same time and I've even got some uh, small flowers uh, appearing there which is a great sign and then on the end there I've never grown them before but I've got two cute melon plants uh, starting to climb up the trellis and I'm super excited to being able to taste those later on in the year and it was in containers and um, trays that you've got about the place I've planted up uh, a mixed salad uh, a variety in there which will be um, great for adding a, a different taste to your salad in the kitchen so two lovely dahlias here big daddies which i bought actually from the nursery where we bought it, uh, the uh, the greenhouse and um yeah absolutely in love with, with the, the two big daddies so that's it really for the june garden tour you know the garden is very much work in progress and um, there's a lot to be done um you know as i mentioned the steps and the more beds but it's getting there and we still get and we're getting a decent amount of food out of the area that we've created here so um, why not join me again maybe in a month or two where i can show you the progress hopefully the steps will be in by then and more beds and we'll be we'll be able to see then what we've uh, managed to harvest from the garden but for now thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed our little garden tour here at uh, gwen and griffith and uh, we'll see you again soon